Welcome back to Early Line. I am not Matt Musso. I am Taylor Sharp along with Mario Jerez. And look, we're going to switch it up a little bit. Um, college football is kind of my thing. So we're going to talk quarterback races, in particular the LSU quarterback race. Uh, Mario, yesterday y'all were discussing Jaden Daniels at 70-1 to to win the Heisman Trophy. I see that Miles Brennan's 150-1 to and Garrett Nussmeier's not even listed, which I'm going to get into that in a minute. Uh what are your thoughts on these odds for these guys to win the Heisman? So I think the Jaden Daniels thing is actually a little interesting because we immediately had retorts in the chat when me and Hilly were talking about that, that Daniels would not have come to LSU if he knew that he was not going to start. But I would say that it's interesting that it seems that Brian Kelly and the coaching staff seem to have a very specific, very pecu peculiar plan for Jaden Daniels. Because remember, he is the most experienced out of the bunch here. He started 30 games. Nussmeier started zero. Miles Brennan has started three. But when uh, Jaden Daniels was brought in to LSU from Arizona State, according to him, a big thing that they're trying to do is change up his footwork. And during the spring, apparently he had problems with those new mechanics. And if he's able to get that down and, and have Brian Kelly in a position where he's comfortable to play him, I think that he, he kind of has the advantage here because he does have the most starts under his belt. And he is really athletic. He has that dimension that Miles Brennan nor Nussmeier can bring. So I'm not saying he's going to win the job, but I think he has a much better chance than I did like three days ago. All right, let's talk about y'all's poll question yesterday. Your poll question yesterday was, who do you want to be LSU's starting quarterback? First off, tell me, who do you think is going to win the job, and who do you want to win the job? Okay, could be wrong, June 29th, but just based on everything I, I said, I would think that Jaden Daniels is going to win the job. I just think he has more tools athletically than Miles Brennan, and he has more experience. Could be wrong, it's June 29th, you asked me the question, that's what I think. Who do I want to start is a more interesting question. Obviously, the, the most bold answer would be Garrett Nussmeyer, and I don't think that's the craziest thing because, again, not listed on traditional sports books. Nobody's expecting a thing out of him this year, but he is a coach's son. Some good players, some good quarterbacks have known to be coach's sons. What's up, Joe Burrow? And maybe he doesn't have the experience of the other guys, but he has not been put in a reasonable environment to succeed. And just like Jaden Daniels kind of struggled in the springtime, Garrett Nussmeyer really stepped up in the springtime. So I think it would be cool to see him play. That would really speak to his natural talent. And I think it's interesting. Sources around LSU, according to Brody Miller and The Athletic, said that Garrett Nussmeyer does not plan to transfer if he does not win the job. And down the road, maybe he's attracted uh, to the aspect of maybe competing against Walker Howard. But off the bat, I think it would be really interesting to see him start. So let's go with that. Okay. I'm going to say that I want Garrett Nussmeyer to start as well. I'll tell you why in just a second. As to who I think is going to start, I am also going to go with Garrett Nussmeyer. I think Nussmeyer is going to win this job. I really do. And look, I'm not one of those guys who's just like, well, he looked the best in the spring game. Look, I played this position for a few years. I've coached it. Take it for what it's worth. I think that Garrett Nussmeyer is the most talented quarterback on this roster. And I think he was the most talented quarterback on last year's roster as well. I just don't think he was quite ready. You put a little weight on this kid. I mean, you could see him, his mentality at the spring game. I mean, he's he's dapping up his teammates on the sidelines. They respond to him really well. He looks like a leader out there. And look, I, I love Miles Brennan. I mean, he's a he's the ultimate LSU Tiger. He had many a chances to leave. He chose not to. I just I think that I think you gotta go with the guy who has the highest ceiling. And I think that far and away that that, that is Garrett Nussmeyer. And I'll even give you a depth chart right now. If I had to give you the depth chart right now, I would say Garrett Nussmeyer, Miles Brennan, Jaden Daniels, Walker Howard in that order. I respect that. I tried to get Hilly's thoughts on that. And he was trying to kind of, you know, hide behind the curtain. But Taylor being bold here on June 30th. And I respect that. And you're right it's about it. It's hot take Thursday, man. But yeah. I'm, I'm, look, I'm throwing my hat in the Garrett Nussmeyer thing. I, I've seen this kid play. Um, you know, I, I watch a lot of, we, we watch a lot of tape at, at Liberty High. Um, you know, breaking down the QBs. He has, if not the best, one of the top five quarterback tapes I've ever seen coming out of high school. And I know that doesn't always translate to the SEC level, but I mean, this kid was in 6A in the state of Texas. He's a coach's son, and you go listen to him. He's talked about how, because Doug Nussmeyer's moved around so much, the kids had to win about seven different starting quarterback jobs. He's dominated all of them. He's been a leader everywhere he's went. I think that he has all the talent in the world. And for all those people who are like, well, Miles Brennan has the biggest arm, not so fast. This kid has just as big, if not as big of an arm as, as him. And I mean, you see some of the throws he makes, just fitting them into the tight windows in that spring game. I just, 
I think that if Brian Kelly really wants to make a splash this year, I think his best chance to win this year is with Garrett Nussmeyer. Man, drinking the Kool-Aid. Garrett Nussmeyer and the Raiders here. Let's see if they have a good season. You might make a little bit of money there. Not even on the board, Garrett Nussmeyer. That's it, man. Nah, I I'm joking. But I, I didn't play the quarterback position. I do broadcast the LSU games in Spanish. And last year, we didn't have many big plays from the quarterback. But one that stands out in my mind in the loss to Arkansas was Garrett Nussmeyer running around, making something happen, and somehow, some way finding Jack Besh in the back of the end zone. Yeah, well, that was a great catch by Besh, too, but nobody else on the roster last year could do that, and we'll see if anybody else on the roster this year can do that, but he does have a high ceiling, and you remember all the hoopla for Nuss coming out of high school, too, right? He was in the same class as Mason Smith, and I think they even had his name up on like one of the local restaurants here at Pluckers, and I just think how quickly we kind of forget because he was on the bench for one season. It was really cloudy with his red shirt situation, but maybe we should not sleep on Gary Nussmeyer. I'm starting to drink the Nuss Kool-Aid just like I was drinking the Raiders Kool-Aid in the first segment. Look, look, man, I'm glad you brought up the Arkansas game. Anytime somebody mentions, oh, well, Garrett Nussmeyer's only shot at prime time, we saw him play, he was a deer in headlights. He was not a deer in headlights just because he threw two interceptions. His first two drives resulted in a field goal and a touchdown in the back of the end zone to Jack Bash. He went out there slinging the ball around. That was his issue. I think he was a little too juiced up. I think he was a little too ready to go. he didn't start the game either, right? No, he did like, not. Max yeah. Johnson got the first two drives, I believe, and did what Max Johnson does. And then Garrett Nussmeyer came in, really fired him up. And look, he made some mistakes. He was a freshman, obviously. You cut down on those eras, have him a little bit more in control. He can move around in the pocket. And everybody says, oh, well, you have to start Jaden Daniels. He's the, he's the mobile guy. Has anybody seen Garrett Nussmeyer play? You don't have to run a 4-3 to be considered a mobile quarterback. I mean... Joe Burrow didn't run a 4-3. He was plenty mobile. I mean, yeah, but it's different. He had 700 I, rushing yards. No, I, I like, understand that, but I'm talking about your ability to run and throw the ball, and I, I think Jaden Daniels lacks in one of those very important areas. You know, Nussmeyer seems to kind of be the perfect fit of, of both guys. You know, you view Miles Brennan as kind of a stand in the pocket, deliver the ball down the field. Daniels, at this point in his career, let's just call it like it is, he's very, he's very much a run-first quarterback. I mean, if you want a guy where you can – put in the most wrinkles to your offense. I mean, I think that's Garrett Nussmeyer because he can do a little bit of everything. Yeah, Jaden Daniels, the only thing that scares me is, like you said, his kind of one-dimensionalness because 2019 as a freshman, he had a great year, 17 touchdowns, two picks, but then he really regressed after that. Got well, hurt his, his touchdown year. numbers go down every single year. Yeah. And, and while his rushing numbers stayed consistent, his, his passing goes down. Is that because of Herm Edwards? He didn't gel with the coach staff? We don't know. Is that because teams started to figure him out? That's an area of concern as well. I mean, anytime you degress, you know, over a three-year period consistently, it is. It's cause for concern. Yeah, 10 touchdowns, 10 picks last year, not pretty. I mean, you had 27 touchdowns and six picks with Max Johnson, who left. But he is interesting just because he has the experience. I mean, 30 games starting in college, you're working with a new coach who's trying to change your mechanics. Maybe it is a good thing for Jaden Daniels. But what do you think of, of Miles Brennan? Because... It's interesting. We as fans, I don't think has ever have ever gotten to really fairly judge Miles Brennan. Like he started three games against three pretty bad defenses. Like Mississippi State was okay. He played well, but he, we, we haven't gotten to see him against like I want to say Florida. Florida's not really on that level anymore. But you know the meat of the schedule: the Alabamas, the Floridas, teams like that. And as fans, we've kind of only got those three games to go off of, and that's frustrating as hell because he's been here for seventy-two years. So from your perspective of playing quarterback, based on what we've seen from Miles Brennan, do you think we're maybe sleeping on him a little bit just because we have not seen him, literally? You know, it's really hard to tell because you mentioned that. And what are the what's the first thing people say when you go to Miles Brennan? Well, you got to start Miles Brennan. He has a ton of experience. Does he? No. He's been on the team for a he long time. He quite literally does He played <laughs> in three games. And keep in mind, it was Mississippi State, Missouri, and Vanderbilt. Very much the bottom feeders of the SEC. Let's call it like it is. He did go one and two in those games. The things that concerned me with Miles Brennan, look, Kid's got a great arm. He can make all the throws. I think he's smart enough to, you know, go through his progressions quickly. He was awful on third down. I believe it was something like three for 27 on third down in the losses to Missouri and Mississippi State. And I could be off for a little bit, but it was around three for 27. I'd have to go back and look. But, yeah, just when it came into crunch time, he didn't seem like he was quite ready. Now, could that change over time as games go along? Absolutely, because you got to think those were kind of the yeah. first games he started. Through I mean, the course of a season, you get much better. For I mean, sure, look for at sure. uh, look at Sat Mettenberger, his first year as a starter, much better towards the end, and then the following year he was going off, throwing thousand yard receivers. You know, with Landry and Beckham, he hasn't really gotten that benefit of having a full season and. Part of that is on him. You know, he's had plenty of chances to win this job before. Yes, two of those years were Joe Burrow, but it does kind of speak volumes that he's been here this long and he's only started three games. No, it does. And 
Look, I'm not saying a quarterback has to be mobile. The thing that concerns me, look, he, he took you down the field, and, and I understand this was play call, and you know, people weren't happy with the Linehan situation as passing him coordinator. They ended that really quickly. I understand that. You had four opportunities to score from inside the five-yard line against Missouri, and Miles Brennan couldn't get it done. Now, is that his fault? Is that not? You know, we don't know. We weren't in the huddle. We didn't hear what the plays were called, but just, you know, in that small sample size, he has struggled in crunch time. Again, that could pick up with as he gets more and more experience, but I still think Miles Brennan's kind of a wild card in himself. I mean, people act like they're like, oh, he's the safe option. You know what you're going to get with him. Do you know what you're going to get with him? I don't. No. I mean, I, I don't think that he has that much experience. He knows how the program's ran, but then again, you have an entirely new coaching staff. He's not ahead of the eight ball anymore. I mean, he's not. he doesn't have an advantage over anybody anymore, so I think he's very much a wild card as well. I think all three guys are. You haven't seen Jaden Daniels in the SEC. Garrett Nussmeyer is still pretty young, and Miles has only played in three games, really. As of a couple of weeks ago, Brian Kelly thinks the same thing. He said they don't really know. He said he was impressed with Garrett Nussmeyer, but they still have a lot to figure out. But what he did say, which I thought was interesting, caught my attention, is he basically alluded to there's no way in hell we're having two quarterbacks. I did that before. It was not a good time. They're going to narrow this eventually from three to two, and then eventually from two to one, at least based on those comments. I don't 100% believe him when he says that. Look, if Jaden Daniels doesn't win this job and you need a you want to run a little bit of read option, you're not keeping Jaden Daniels on the sidelines. I mean, uh, maybe like you, red zone packages. That's what I'm saying. You, you've seen the kids run a bill. And I'm not saying it's going to be a two quarterback system. I think you can fit in some wrinkles with Jaden Daniels. Do I want that? No, I'd much rather play one quarterback. But with a talent like that, you, you got to kind of get the ball in his hands a little bit. So I don't. I'm sure that's what he wants. I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the case. Uh, Swerve in the chat, Swerve exclamation point says Brennan averaged 38 points in those games. His he did. PFF metrics were outstanding. Not necessarily saying he was bad, but again, the level of the competition. Mississippi State has a decent defense. He had some good moments in that game, but Vanderbilt was a Vanderbilt terrible Vanderbilt did defense. not win a game that year. And Missouri was a terrible defense. So the we, only defense worse than those was LSU's in 2020. Oh, boy. I do they not. were at the bottom of the conference and everything. I understand that he put up 38 points a game. Look what he did. When he had to, and look, I'm not bashing Miles Brennan. I'm a Miles Brennan fan, but there's a lot of people out there that say, oh, well, Miles is the safe option. I mean, is he? I still think there's a lot up in the air. I mean, can he get the job done? We don't really know. No. All we know right now is he's one and two against the lower teams in the SEC. That's all we know right now. Literally all we know, and that's frustrating. But as of June 30th, I think that Jaden Daniels is going to start. You think that Gary Nussmeyer is going to start. We'll see what happens. But it's going to be interesting to see that eventually they'll have to cut it down from two to one. But before that, they had to cut it down from three to two. But at least you have some experience there, and you have some blue chip talent in there. Like, it's not the craziest thing to say that, you know, LSU's uh, quarterback room, just in terms of talent and experience, is in really good shape. But that's also more pressure on Brian Kelly to make the right decision. You don't want to pick the wrong guy. Even if the guy you pick isn't necessarily bad. Don't want to earn, end up like Urban Meyer after he chose Dwayne Haskins over Joe Burrow. Like, it was a good option. He played really well, but the guy you let go was generationally great. So that could be a blessing for LSU, but it could be a curse if they don't manage it correctly. No, it could be. And, and look, you mentioned it. That's second to hiring your Koji staff, picking the right starting quarterbacks. It. The good news for LSU, I think all three of these guys are really talented, and I think that Whoever wins this job truly beat out the other two, so I think you're going to be in good hands regardless of who he chooses. Yeah, got some decent receivers to throw the ball to as well.